<laughs> Hi, Pastor Bob and Jan here. PB and J. Hi, everybody. We're back. We're back. We're back. And back with another time from Pastor's Chat on a Tuesday. Yes. It's been a frazzled day for me. Yeah. All of these meetings this morning and this afternoon, recording the podcast, meeting. All with, good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple questions. Yeah. One from Mary and one from Sharon. Well, on that note, please send us your questions uh, from the Bible. And if we answer your questions, if we use your questions to answer, of course, you win a free croissant from Flying with Jerome. Woohoo! And they are worth it. Yeah, they're good croissants. Get your so. thinking cap on. <laughs> so um, send your questions to me by email or Facebook, Messenger, text to me, whatever you want, and I'll forward it to Bob. And then if your question is chosen, you get a croissant from Flying with Jerome. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about the first question. Okay, so the first question is from Mary. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> She has a question from our community Bible reading for Wednesday, August the 19th. 2 John 1.1 1, 1. The elder to the elect lady and her children. And 2 John 1.5 And now I ask you, dear lady. So Mary's question is, who is the elect lady? Oh, that is a good question. First thing we have to keep in mind is during this period that the church was being persecuted, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we know that as we jump over to the book of Revelation, we see the church was persecuted, particularly John was persecuted, mm -hmm. thrown to the island of Patmos to rot there, and that was when God spoke to him, gave him the book of Revelation. So, there's a little code here, okay? First of all, the church is what? The bride of Christ, okay? We know that the church is chosen by God, and so he uses the term to this elect lady, He's talking to the church. Mm -hmm. That's another term for that. And so that's a good question, Mary. If you, know, if you hadn't known all the ins and outs of that, we might wonder who he's talking about. And that's who he's talking. He's writing to the church. Many people think it was the church at Ephesus. I'm not exactly sure, but more than likely it was. Uh, as the church at Ephesus was also uh, the subject of the matter in Third John. But anyway, to the church, who's called the elect lady. But that's a good question, Mary. Yep, Very definitely. Good. Now get you and Bruce in the car and head on over to Jerome's. I'll let him know tonight that um, you are one of the winners for the croissant. Ooh, enjoy the croissant. I know Bruce will. Mm -hmm. Okay, now our question from Miss Sharon. Sharon asks, what about the differences of creatures in Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10 that are described? One has the face of an ox, and one has the face of a cherub. But Ezekiel 10 says that Ezekiel saw the same vision. So what's up with that? What is up with that? Good question, Sharon. Good question, Sharon. Now, I'm gonna read the passages here, so stand by, and then I will discuss it, and I'll have to let you know that I'm under the influence of Matthew Henry. He's a good commentator. But he's more than a commentator, okay? He's a good commentator. Anyway. Ezekiel 1 and verse 10 says, As for the likeness of their faces, each one had a human face. The four had the face of a lion and on the right side, and the four had the face of an ox on the left side, and the four had the face of an eagle. So a human, an ox, a lion, and an eagle. Chapter 10, verse 14 says, And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of the cherub, and the second face was that of a human face, and the third face was that of a lion, and the fourth face was that of an eagle. So you have a cherub, a lion, a human, and an eagle. Chapter 10 and verse 15 says, And the cherub mounted up. These were the living creatures that I saw by the Chebar channel. Okay, that's referring to what he saw in chapter 1. Chapter 10, verses 20 and 22 through 22 says this, these were the living creatures that I saw underneath the, um, the God of Israel by the Chebar can, uh, channel, canal, rather. And I knew that they were the cherubim. Each had four faces, each had four wings, and each underneath their wings, the likeness of human hands. And as for the likeness of their faces, they were the same faces who, uh, whose appearance I had seen by Chebar canal, uh, canal 
each one have them straight forward. Hmm, does sound like two different ones. One had the face of an ox and one doesn't mention the ox. So here's what Mr. Matthew Henry said. Some have concluded in his research that the face of the cherub was actually that of an ox. Hmm. So the cherub has the ox's face. Matthew Henry didn't like that. Okay. So he said, uh, there is, he has a difference of that. He says, but the rest of the vision is, is so much that the same that it has to be the same vision. Okay, so some people think it wasn't the same vision. But there's so much so, and there's reference to the, the first chapter. Okay, first of all, let's back off and understand that in the face of an ox, an ox is a sign of strength. Okay, um, a lion is a sign of boldness. An eagle is a sign of swiftness. A man is a sign of intelligence, most of the time. Okay, <laughs> And there's the cherub, who's uh, really a sign of God's mercy. Now, let's understand the entire creatures, all the, this creature with all these different faces, is called a cherubim or a cherub. Okay, So keep that in mind. Now, Mr. Henry goes on to say that, first of all, you know, some imply that maybe Ezekiel didn't recognize the face of a cherub in chapter 1. Wrong. Mr. Henry says, remember, Ezekiel was a priest. Where is the cherubim found? In the temple? In the inner court, right? Over the mercy seat. That's why the cherubim is a sign of God's mercy. All right, so let's let's look at it this way. So, Ezekiel sees the first one, okay, and he notices the details, all right, and he notices the details of the ox and the, the eagle, the human face, and the lion. Now he sees it again in chapter 10. Now in chapter 10, he's kind of in a hurry to talk about other things, but he goes through again the faces, but this time he leaves out the ox, and he just says it's, it's a cherubim. Well, the entire creature was a cherubim. And so what Matthew Henry concludes is uh, he just didn't, re ex he would, didn't mention the, the, the ox. Instead, he called it the cherubim. The entire creature was the cherubim. I know it's hard to understand, but we need to get past that and understand that you know, what he's talking about is that it, he mentions twice that it is the same creature. And each one has, well, it's apocryphal language, so it is a picture of something that God is moving on the face of the earth. And that's what he's showing here, that God was there and the cherubim was there and God was riding on the cherubim, so to speak, with the cherubim there and the wheel within a wheel. God was working his sovereign will in the, in the world at that time and as he continues to do here, his pleasure. So the message is that the world is the subject to the turns and changes, the wheel within the wheel, and God's providence and affairs in the affairs of men. In the midst of those changes, God is working ways depicted over by the overall view of the Spirit of God, the hand of God, working of God, and here he's depicted of this cherubim. Okay. So it's kind of like in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, and verse 9 says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro over the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless toward him. I know that maybe sounds confusing, but let's just back it off and understand that. First of all, Ezekiel was not confused, okay? And he says that they were the same. So in the first chapter, he sees basically the details of the face of the ox. The second chapter, or the 10th chapter rather, he, when he sees it, he mentions this is the cherubim, okay? And it could be the face of the cherubim. Was he confused? I don't believe so, okay? But we don't stop there, we understand the entire picture, okay? that God is in control of the world and all the events of the world, things are changing, his providence is moving this way and that. I trust that helps a little bit, Sharon. I, I know that I'm not a real, haven't been a real big student of the book of Ezekiel. I've studied it a number of times, preached from it, but uh, not those passages. But it is was enlightening just to read from Mr. Matthew Henry and some other commentators to get you as much as I could in this short period of time for the pastor's chat. So, great questions from Mary and Sharon. Thank you very much for submitting them and uh, for tuning in for the pastor's chat today. Keep your questions coming so we have some for next week. Yeah. 
And uh, by the way, just a reminder that today is Tuesday. That means tomorrow is Wednesday. That means Zoom prayer meeting at 7 p.m. That's right. We sent out the information today and trust you've received that and will join us for the Zoom prayer meeting tomorrow. Great. Well, it was good to see y'all. <laughs> just like romper just room? Just romper room. Yeah. I see Celine. I see Asher. I see Isabella. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us today for Pastor Chat. This is Pastor Bob and Jan. PB and J. Bye, y'all. Bye now.